We are so thankful that you have made the choice to tune in for one of ACC's messages. You know, as you're listening and diving into the truths that are being shared, we challenge you. If you're sitting at your phone or at your computer, hop on social media and be sure to use the hashtag, you belong at ACC, as God is teaching you different things during this message. You belong at ACC and we truly mean that, which means that we would love to have you join us during one of our Sunday services at 710 Aqua Heart Road. We would love to have you jump into this message and we are believing God is going to do some awesome things in your life today. On Vision Sunday, this is a day where uh, we feel like it's important to, to stop and to explain what it is that God has put on our heart for the new year. You might be thinking, we're already talking about 2024. But we are. As a church, our overseers, our elders here at the church, and our executive pastoral team and our staff, we've just spent a couple of the last few weeks going on different uh, retreats to, to plan out the, the 2024 year. And today's the day where we get together and we celebrate what is coming in the future, what God has put on the heart of our leaders. And so that's why you're here. That's why we do Vision Sunday. Really glad that you're here. But one thing that's important to know before we get into the details of 2024 is we have a vision for, for, the, for 2024 and beyond, and we call it our big vision, right? I'm going to put that on the screen, and you guys are going to say it with as much excitement as it should be said. You ready? Say it with me. To see people transformed and released by the love of Jesus. That is what we are all about as a church and, and you might not quite understand what that means. I'll explain a couple of words there for you. The word transformed, right? We want to see people go from wherever they are right now into being transformed more into Christ's likeness, right? We understand that God loves every one of you in this room and myself. He loves all of us just the way we are, but he loves us way too much to leave us that way. We all have more work that can be done to become more like Christ. And as a church... We want to help you transform into becoming more like Christ. Another word that's up on that screen behind me is the word released. Now, what does that mean, right? And it actually has two meanings. One meaning is, is that we understand that all of us in this room, we struggle with sin. We're constantly, or you can't even get through breakfast without doing something that dishonors God, right? If you're like me. And so, uh, unfortunately, we understand that sometimes that bondage of sin is so pervasive that our, our job as a church family is to help each other be released from those bondages of sin, to be able to give them up and to, to, to increase our, our, our ability to live more like Christ. And so we work to be released from sin's bondage, but we also want to be a church that releases people into ministry. Right? When you're a church that's fulfilling the Great Commission, we're not just becoming more like Christ here. We're not only called to be disciples, but we're called to be disciple makers. That we're helping other people become more like Christ. So we want to train people in how to be uh, like Christ and then also teach people how to, how to help others do the same thing and release them into ministry. So this is our big vision. Everything we do is built around this statement to see people transformed and released by the love of Jesus. I hope that in and of itself is exciting to you, but what I want to do today is share with you uh, more specifically the, the immediate vision that God has given to us. How many of you love a good Bible story, right? I, I love a Bible story. Uh, the Bible story I want to share with you today is actually one that most people would say they've never heard before. You probably, even if you read the Bible, you've read the story, but you probably didn't even realize you read right past it. It's a very... Uh, lesser known Bible story. But also what I've noticed is sometimes when you call a Bible story a Bible story, it kind of sounds like a bedtime story. And it, 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 the word story sort of infers that it's fiction. But the story that I'm going to read to you today is not a fiction story. It's a real story that actually happened. And so we get to explore that together. Let me introduce you to some of our characters that in 2 Kings chapter 13, if you have your Bible with you today, is where we're going to see this story. And the first couple of verses I'm going to read to you introduce one of the main characters of this story. You're going to hear a lot of names here. Just bear with me, okay? It says, Jehoash, 
son of Jehoahaz, began to rule over Israel in the 37th year of King Joash's reign in Judah. So far, this story doesn't seem very interesting, does it? You're thinking, well, this is a boring story with a bunch of weird names. Just bear with me, okay? It says that this Jehoash, it says he reigned in Samaria 16 years, but he did what was evil in the Lord's sight. If I pause there for just a moment, when you go through the, the, the books that explain all the kings of Israel, one thing and all the kings of Judah, you're going to know that, that as soon as the king is introduced, within one, one or two sentences, you get to find out if the king honored God or the king did not honor God. And this is an example of that. You, and it says, he did what was evil in the Lord's sight. So is this a good king or a bad king? Bad king, all right? It says, he refused to turn from the sins that Jeroboam, son of Nebat, had led Israel to commit. All right, so our first main character in the story today is this king, Jehoash, okay? So remember, Jehoash, he's not a good king, king over Israel, 16 years. All right, and then in 2 Kings, if we skip down to verse 14, I want you to meet another character in this story. It says, when Elisha, you've probably heard of the prophet Elisha, all right, that's the next character we're going to talk about. When Elisha was in his last illness, you know what that means? He's, he's basically about to go onto his deathbed, okay? He's not going to survive it. Whatever sickness, whatever bug he's got right now, it's going to take his life. And so when he was in his last illness, this is about to go down. It says, King Jehoash of Israel visited him and wept over him. My father, my father, I see the chariots and the charioteers of Israel, he cried. So you have these two guys, the king Jehoash and the prophet Elisha. Prophet Elisha is about to die. King Jehoash, by the way, who's not a good king, right? He's been fighting in these battles and being defeated. The hand of God, the blessing of God is not over him. So he comes over to King Elisha before he dies, and he's just hoping for some sort of blessing, that he does not deserve. And he goes up to him. If we keep reading in verse 15, it says, Elisha told him, get a bow and some arrows. And the king did as he was told. Elisha told him, put your hand on the bow. And Elisha laid his own hands on the king's hands. And then he commanded, open that eastern window. And the king opened it. And then Elisha said, shoot. So he shot an arrow out the window. And then Elisha proclaimed, this is the Lord's arrow, an arrow of victory over Aram, for you will completely conquer the Aramaeans at Aphek. So let me give you what just happened here. The king goes up and asks for a blessing that he does not deserve. And Elisha, before he dies, says, open up the window. Now get me, so, get me a bow and some arrows. And the king does it. And he says, all right, we're going to do this first one together. And they both put their hands on this bow. And the king puts an arrow in it. And he says, listen, I want you to shoot the arrow out the window. We're not aiming at anything in particular. We're not aiming at an enemy. We're not aiming at a can or a melon out there. We're just going to aim and shoot it at the ground. So I want you to waste this arrow out the window. And that's what happens. And as soon as the arrow has left, Elisha looks at the king and says, listen, that arrow you just shot, that arrow represents an arrow of victory. For with that arrow, you will have victory in your next battle. The next battle you're about to go into, this Aramaeans at Aphek, you're going to be successful in that battle because of this arrow you just shot out the window. Let's pause there for just a moment in this story. If we look at the year 2023, as far as Arundel Christian Church is concerned, without a doubt, we have had an arrow of victory. Without a doubt, we've seen victory after victory as God has put his hand of blessing on this church. Got our big vision, by the way, to see people transformed and released by the love of Jesus, that is the definition of what victory looks like around here. When we do those things, when we're accomplishing that vision, we're being victorious. And when we look at 2023, God has had his hand of blessing on us, a broken people. 
He's been pouring out victory after victory after victory, an arrow of victory. And I wrote down just a few of the things. I'm not going to get into all the things that God did this past year. I just wrote like the sports center update, okay, of what God has done in 2023 at Arundel Christian Church. And by the way, you have my permission to get excited with me. If one of these things excites you, would you let me know? All right, here's one of the things that God did here this year. We've had a record number of baptisms in 2023. Is that exciting to you? We've had a record attendance in our Sunday services, in ACC students, in ACC kids. We had 212 kids at one time in this building. I mean, those are like out, of, they're just blowing out, yeah. In this past year, in the last 365 days is when we added a third service. Um, we have a record number of people traveling on go adventures this year. We had 54 people going on a short-term mission trip to four different places. And by the way, the record before that, we, we more than doubled it this year. It was incredible. <laughs> the number of life groups, all right? Around this time last year, we had 25 life groups. We're now just on the verge of 40 life groups at Arundel Christian Church. We had some incredible events this year. One of the things we did was Journey to the Cross. That was incredible. We launched a discipleship program. Listen to this, y'all. We have uh, $71,000 from your generosity that has come in more than our budget requires for us to do ministry here. Like we're operating in the black. Isn't that great? And these are things that aren't, these aren't just things that we celebrate every year. I want you to understand, these are things that are unique. We've never had this kind of blessing poured out on this church before. Like, this church has always been a blessed church, and God's hand of protection and growth has always been on this place. But looking at 2023, there's something that sticks out that's just amazing to me, and it's that God has given us access to an arrow of victory. Amen. And we're excited about it. And so I want to pause for a moment before we go into the rest of the story, and I want to just pray with you. I want you to, I want to invite us as a, as a body of Christ, as a family, to pray together and just thank God for all that he's done and is doing right now before we look into the future. So let's do that together. Father, I thank you so much for the arrow of victory that you've given to us. God, when we think about the lyrics to the song, uh, yet not I, but through Christ in me, we recognize that the victory that's been experienced in this church isn't because of any one of us in this room. It's because of you. It's because of your hand of blessing on this place. It's because you're pouring out victory here. You're doing the work. And so we recognize that right now. We don't take any credit for it. We give you all the praise, all the glory, for you are good and your, your name is worthy to be praised. And so we praise you together right now for the work that you're doing, God. We open up our hands and ask for more. We ask for you to continue to pour out your blessing on this place. We are not done receiving it. And God, we ask that you continue to work through us in a powerful way. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, uh, speaking of, well, speaking of growth, I know we're a church that wants to grow both deep and wide. We want not only to, to grow in the number of people that are attending this church that are hearing the gospel and coming to know Jesus, but we also want to grow in depth, right? We want people who have made a decision to follow Jesus to learn more and more about what that looks like. You know, if we had, um, we, we didn't apply, there's this thing called Outreach Magazine, and they, they have this article, the 100 fastest growing churches in America. And you have to fill out some applications and submit all your numbers and all that stuff. We don't do that here. But if we had, I want you to know, when it comes to church growth, we would be in the 41 spot of the 100 fastest growing churches in America right now. The kind of, yeah. The, the growth we're experiencing here is unprecedented. And so this, this arrow of victory, keep that in your mind for a moment as I keep reading this story. The, the story of King Jehoash and Elisha goes on in verse 18. It says, then he said, now pick up the other arrows. Remember, 
Elisha had said, go get a bow and some arrows, multiple arrows. And so he says, now pick up the other arrows and strike them also against the ground. And so the king picked them up and he struck the ground three times. I want you to understand what happens here. We're going to learn here in just a second that the quiver of arrows was fuller than just three more arrows remaining. And so when Elisha says, I want you now to, to, to take the other arrows and shoot them also into the ground, that there's something to understand about what, what, what decision. Imagine for a moment that you're sitting in the car with me and we're on a road trip. And you have a stack of $20 bills in your hand. You got 10 of them. Right, 10 20s, that's a lot of money, good money, right? And I say, hey, I, I, want, I want to show you something. I need you to, to roll down the window. You got one of the old cars, right? Roll down. <laughs> roll down the window. And I want you to toss a 20 out the window. I want you to open up the window. And I want you to take something pretty valuable, something that has, you know, the, the arrows that this king was shooting out there, they keep losing battles. This king is thinking, I, I can't be wasting arrows right now. That's one of the reasons maybe we're losing. I, and I want you to take this $20 bill, and I just want you to throw it out the window. And you're probably thinking in that moment, I don't like this at all. Uh, but maybe Pastor Matt has some sort of lifelong lesson that's going to change my life right now. I'm going to learn something very powerful. And so you trust me, and you take the 20 and you throw it out the window. And then imagine I say, okay, now take the other 20s and throw them out the window. You know what's going to happen there is now you're going to be like, all right, listen, I was okay with the one. I, I, I maybe can get behind, I'll, I'll, let's take another one. All right. Whew, it's the second one. Whew. Third one. Ooh, now you're really pushing it. You've just dropped 80 bucks out the window. And now you're going to probably at this point stop and look over and, and be like, okay, what next? You're not going to keep dropping them out the window because of the way our minds work. The way King Jehoash is, he's an evil king. And even he is sitting there, right? He's, he's the one sitting there thinking like, I got this quiver of arrows. You've asked me to shoot them out the window, to strike the ground with them. And he chooses to stop at three. And then he looks over at Elisha. Now, let me tell you some things that King Jehoash knew at this moment. One thing that he knew he knew that the first arrow he shot out the window was an arrow that represented victory in their next battle. Elisha had been really clear, this arrow is an arrow of victory for your people in the next battle. And then he says to him, now take the other arrows and do the same thing with them. He had a couple bits of information. He knew that this arrow was an arrow that represented victory that he wasn't used to. And he also knew that he was asked to take the other arrows and do the same thing. And then what does he choose to do? He chooses to do what a lot of us choose to do, which is to play it safe. And he shoots three arrows out the window when he had access to more. It says in verse 19, but the man of God, that's Elisha, was angry with him. He says, you should have struck the ground five or six times, he exclaimed. Then you would have beaten Aram until it was entirely destroyed. Now you will be victorious only three times. You had access to a quiver of victory arrows. And you now know that you're going to be victorious in the next one because we shot that one together. And then you chose to be victorious in three more battles. You know, one thing you don't really realize, King Jehoash, is there's going to be five or six more battles ahead of you. And you've decided to be victorious only three times. Why do we do that sometimes? When we have access to blessing, why do we sometimes choose to not go all in? And I've been thinking about why we do that as kind of broken people. One of the reasons I think certainly Jehoash didn't shoot all the arrows at the window is he lacked faith. He's like, listen, maybe if he had shot the first arrow and then immediately went into battle and saw the blessing right then of that arrow, he would have come back. He's like, man, I'm getting rid of all these. 
If you threw a $20 bill out my window and then I'm like, check your left pocket and there was a $100 bill there, you're like, I'm chucking all these out there. I don't know what's going on, but I've, I've seen it. And what happened in this case is Jehoash lacked faith. He didn't have anything to go off of and he was just supposed to rely on his faith and he didn't have enough. So only shot three arrows out the window. Another reason I think we, we, we struggle to shoot more arrows out the window is we lack boldness. A lot of our times we just get caught up in human reasoning. And sometimes, you know, it, you can't really blame Jehoash. She's thinking, these arrows have value. These are my arrows. The next time I go into battle, these are my arrows. I need some of them. And so he just kind of got caught up in human reasoning instead of relying on God to bless him. And and here's the thing, the leadership of this church, before I share the the vision with you, I want you to know that the overseers and the executive team, the pastors at this church, our staff, we all are looking at this story from a very, the, the vision God has given to us is that 2023 has been that first arrow. And that God is saying to this church, I got a whole quiver of them. How faithful are you going to be to shoot them out the window and to claim the blessings that I have for you? And so with that in mind, I want us to be a church that really thinks about 2024. If you haven't got one of the free shirts yet, make sure you get one. But they say right here, the best is yet to come. Now I look at 2023 at all that God is doing here. And I'm thinking, wow, man, it's amazing for a church to, to double in size in a year. Just blows my mind. But at the same time, to, to look back and say, God, I believe that you're telling us that the best hasn't even happened yet. That's the, the attitude that I want to, to embrace as a church, that the best is yet to come. And it's not because we want to make a big name for ourselves. It's not because we want to make a big name for any one person in this room. It's because we want to make Jesus known to people who don't know him. We want to see people transformed and released by the love of Jesus. And so how are we going to do that? That's where uh, a detailed vision comes into play. That's where the the overseers of this church have given the staff a detailed vision. This is what needs to happen in the next five years. And this is what needs to happen next year for us to be able to accomplish the vision that God's given to us. Uh, There's a verse in Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2. And it says this in the NLT. It says, Then the Lord said to me, Write my answer plainly on tablets, so that a runner can carry the correct message to others. Now, your version of Scripture might say, take my vision and write it down for others to see. Habakkuk actually says says that when God has given a vision to the church, that we need to put it up on a billboard. In fact, the message paraphrase actually says, take the vision and put it plainly on a billboard so everyone can see it. And today, we're going to put it plainly on a billboard so you can see it. Why? So that you can get excited about it. So you can run off and tell others about it. So you can invite other people into what God's doing here. And that's why we do this. The first thing I want to share with you today is our long-term vision. Now, I'm going to say that our long-term vision, it actually fits onto like multiple pages, and I don't have time to go into every detail of our long-term vision. So what I want to share with you today is just some highlights. If you'd like to see the fuller version of that, email me and let me know, and I'll send you a PDF, okay? So here's just some, some I'm not going to put them all on the screen. I'm going to get through them really quick so we can get to 2024. But in the next, uh, the first three, these are all in the next two years, One of the things that our overseers have asked this church to accomplish because the Holy Spirit has prompted them to put this vision on our plates, one is an in-house counseling center. We want to have a place on property where when you need help from a licensed Christian counselor, and and a little bit, we have our... our, um, Uh, Stephen ministry thing that's launching as well. So we have uh, the multiple facets for different levels of need, but we want to be able to make sure that people who are hurting uh, that need that extra level of uh, clinical uh, counseling are able to get that here on property. We also plan in the next two years to launch a ministry training institute. And what we mean by that is it's basically our discipleship program 
on steroids, right? It's a discipleship program, that 13-week program. When you're done with that, for some people, they're going to say, I'm so hungry for more of this. I want to go really in-depth and graduate to a place where I'm ready to, to either go into ministry vocationally or I'm ready to go into ministry in a leadership capacity in my place of employment or in my neighborhood or whatever that might be. We want to have a ministry training institute. Another thing that we want to have in the next two years is to convert our cafe into a cafe that's not only available to you on Sunday mornings, but throughout the week. That would be a place that our community can gather for coffee and food and enjoy a place to, uh, in, a, in a God-centered environment to, to enjoy fellowship with each other. And so that's another thing that's on our, on our zero to two-year window. These next two things are in the one to three-year category. And these are pretty big, all right? So bear with me. I'm going to try to explain one uh, in more detail later. But right now, we have access to about 33,000 square feet in this facility. And God has put on the, the heart of our overseers that if we are going to grow beyond 1,200, which is going to be a plateau for this church until we make more space for others, that we need to expand from 33,000 square feet to 70,000 square feet in the next one to three years. And so I'll get into more detail about how we plan to do that in just a moment. Um, so put that on the back burner for a moment. Another thing that we want to do in the next one to three years is have our residency program at a point where it's considered robust, where we have five to six residents or interns that are going through our residency program every year uh, learning how to do ministry vocationally. In the three to five year category, a couple things that, were, that are on our vision statement uh, our, our three to five year goals. One of them is to have a prison ministry uh, where we're doing ministry in a local prison and also to have improved our life group participation to the point where 70% of those people that gather in here on a Sunday morning are also part of a life group. And so that's just a little bit of the long-term vision. I could go into detail on each one of those. There's even some vision statements I haven't shared because I don't have time this morning. Uh, but if you want more details, would you please just let me know, let the office know, and we'll send that out to you in a PDF. Here's what I want to share with you, though, specific to 2024. In 2024, we have these things called wigs. Every year we have them. If you're not sure what a wig is, some of you are thinking it's something that Pastor Matt needs desperately, right? <laughs> That's not what we're talking about. Uh, we're talking about wildly important goals. And in order to get to our, our five-year vision, in order to accomplish all the things that God has for us on the radar, we need to first focus on what do we need to accomplish in 2024 to get to where God is, get us to where God is leading us. And so if you have your fill in the blanks this morning, you'll notice there's nine spots on there. Those are our nine wigs for 2024. And I'm going to give them to you in order. And uh, as I'm sharing those with you, feel free to write them down. I'm going to give you just a, a brief overview of each one. The first one, you ready? Drum roll. <laughs> is we're going to be launching an evening service in 2024. Okay. Um, again, I'll give you a little bit of a reasoning behind this. We're not going to, by the way, we're not going to launch this service, uh, a fourth service, uh, some evening during the week. We're not going to launch it until we're ready. So the first part of this is to develop the plan for knowing when we're ready to do it. Uh, when we get to the 1,200 number in attendance, which is right about where we're, we're, we're teetering on that right now, when we get there for a certain amount of time, and once we've hired or, or brought in some volunteers that are needed to be able to pull that off with excellence, so we're not burning out our volunteers, we're not burning out our staff, we're keeping everyone healthy, uh, once the timing is right, we're going to launch that service. And we're going to tell everyone right up front that that service is not guaranteed long-term. It's at best a temporary solution to be able to make more room for ministry in our community until God shows us what's next. If you're thinking, is that a Thursday night, a Friday night, a Saturday night, Sunday night service, some other night? Uh, great question. I have no idea yet. <laughs> but we're going to be developing that plan and launching it when ready, uh, probably in the, the, the spring of 2024. That's the first of our wigs. And give you an idea of why, as some of you might be thinking, hey, we still have room. I got a couple empty seats next to me. 
You got the front row. Like, why, why would we add another service? Well, as we continue to grow, there's a point at which a church can't break past a certain growth barrier because the church just seems too full. If a new family of five walked in here right now, uh, they, they would have a hard time finding a place to sit and feeling welcomed. And so we want to constantly be thinking about uh, how, how if, if we're going to plateau at 1,200, we need to have a plan to be able to expand so we can continue to, to love on our community. And that's why we're doing that. Number two is an evening, uh, sorry, is a new campus development plan. This is the one that's going to take the most work this year, and it's going to probably be the one that takes the most faith. This is the one that's going to cause us to have to open up some extra windows and shoot every arrow we got out the window, because uh, I've never done this before. Let me tell you what I mean by this. If we know that God's calling us in the next uh, two to four years to expand from 33,000 square feet to 70,000, that's more than double the square footage we have access to right now, then there's a couple ways that he might prompt us to do that. One way would be opening up some uh, campuses. So this would, might be one of Arundel Christian Church's campuses, but having other places in our community where people can also gather for church on a Sunday morning. And that's a way that you could expand from 33 to 70,000. Another way, which is a bigger like, oh my goodness, uh, would be that maybe in, in a year's time, two years time, three years time, we're selling this facility and moving into something else. And I don't know what that looks like right now. And that's why the goal for next year is a, a plan. We're not saying that a year from now we're going to be moving into a new facility. What we're saying is a year from now you all should know what it is that we are going to do and how we're going to accomplish it and how we're going to pull it off. And so we're asking God to give us that, that wisdom this year, this new campus development plan, whether that's alternate campuses or a new main campus we're leaning into him for his, his wisdom as we put that together. We have conversations with realtors and bankers and all the people that we need to talk with. Those are all scheduled this year to start those conversations. If you have any questions, now would be a weird time to ask them, so don't. Um, <laughs> what I recommend is just shooting me an email, shooting the, the uh, info at arundelcc.org. Shoot us an email and we'll do our best to get you some answers. Number three is a partnership engagement strategy. A partnership engagement strategy. What this is, is if you're in this room right now and you're a member at Arundel Christian Church, you've joined this church officially, you know that we don't call you a member, we call you a partner, right? You're in partnership at ACC. Well, we have our five catalysts that we talked about over the last five weeks. And right now, we don't really have a great strategy for helping our partners move from one area of their uh, faith development to the next. So what we want to do is put a, a, a strategy together that if, let's just say one of you is stuck in your faith development and you, the next thing that you need to do is join a life group, but for whatever reason, you're just not doing it. Or the next thing you need to do is start serving somewhere. And for whatever reason, you just haven't done it. That we have a way to, to spur you on and to encourage you lovingly towards that next step. Right now, the only strategy we have is just to talk about it from this platform and to encourage you to do it, but we want to be able to be a little bit more spurring in a loving way in your faith. So that's, that's something that we're going to develop in 2024. Uh, number four is we're going to remodel the cafe. Now, some of you might be thinking, why would we do that if there's a chance we're going to move? Well, if we did move, if we sold this facility three years from now, a couple things. One, three years from now is a long time away. That means we're still going to have to, this is going to be home. We want to make it nice and continue to do nice things here. Uh, but also most of the things that we would do in a cafe remodel would be able to go with us. If we bought new tables, new chairs, new lights, things like that. We'd be able to take those fixtures to wherever we might be headed. And so with that in mind, we want to go into the cafe this year and uh, all the furniture that's kind of very old and falling apart and all that stuff, we're going to replace it, modernize that space. And if God wills it, we would love to be able to find someone with a heart for opening a coffee shop, uh, someone who has a heart for opening up what we'd like to do in there. And instead of Arundel Christian Church owning a coffee shop, we'd rather find someone to lease that space from us and do that in that space for us. And so that's something we're looking at for 2024. Number five is, I'm going to go through these pretty quickly because I'm out of time. You ready? Number five is student ministry growth. 
We'd like to see our ACC student ministry grow to a point where there's 100 students showing up on ACC students evenings and 140 students showing up to remix gatherings. And if you're not sure what those are, a remix gathering is what happens when, uh, instead of doing our small group ministry, we meet in this space and everybody invites their friends and we do a bunch of fun games and music and everything. And the whole purpose is evangelistic. We want to share the love of Jesus with your students, friends who've never heard it before. We'd love to see 140 show up to a remix night. Number six is we want to launch our residency. This year, we planned and developed the plan for our residency. Next year, we're going to launch it, and we're going to have our first two residents on our team helping us in learning how to do ministry. Uh, our residency program is two parts. There's an internship, which is summer only. People who may be a college student who only have their summer available. And then our residency is a one-year program. And those students will actually be housed in host homes. So maybe you're in this room right now and you have a spare room in your house. You're like, I would love to house uh, for a six-month period of time because we're going to have two hosts per year. You're making a six-month commitment to house a, a residency student in your home while they're learning how to do ministry. Number seven, we want to, again, double the number of people on Go Adventures and have 100 people serve on short-term missions this year. We have eight different trips that have already been planned. You'll hear about those more in more detail in the next uh, couple weeks. Number eight is we want to grow our young adult ministry to the point where that's a brand new ministry this year. We want to see 50 young adults showing up every time they gather together for young adult ministry events and, and small groups. And the last one, thank you for letting me go quickly, is 65% participation in our life groups. Right now, we're just below 50%. The church has been growing so fast, we haven't been able to keep up with getting new families plugged into life groups. And so we need to work on that and get up to 65% of everyone who shows up here on a Sunday morning, 65% of you should be in life groups by the end of the year. And that's a lot of work. I'm telling you, can you guys just do me a favor and, and share with me? If you're excited about some of these things, would you let me know about it? And if you're not excited about these things, just keep it to yourself, okay? Um, so, there's a lot going on that we plan to do in 2024. And for that reason, one of the things you're going to notice is our event and programming calendar is going to be a little bit lighter intentionally. Instead of doing four men's ministry events, we're going to do three next year. Instead of four women's ministry events, we're going to do three next year. And the reason why is just to kind of cut back on some of the things that that really burn out our volunteers and our staff so we can focus on some of the things that God's put on our plate. But I'll give you a few sneak peeks. One of them, you guys want to sneak peek into March of 2025? <laughs> Already on the calendar. Our church is going to take its first journey to Israel. Yeah. So if you're, um, you'll hear more about that in the next, um, next month. Uh, so people can start signing up for that and start saving up for March of 2025. I know our VIP party is on the calendar for next year. That's our volunteer celebration event. It's going to be a Hawaiian luau theme. It's going to be awesome. Uh, we have a Brandon Heath concert coming up in spring of next year. We have eight Go Adventures that we're going to be doing next year. We have our first overnight retreat for our women coming up next year. Here's what I want you to do. Right now, you should be asking God what he wants you to do. Right? You ask the question, what now, God? What do you want me to do with all this information? Our, our leadership has a vision that you've given to them. They've shared it with the executive pastoral team. I've shared it with the staff. And now I'm sharing it with you. What should we do with this vision? Right? Habakkuk says that we write it down so we can all run with it. And now it's our turn to take it and run with it, right? So here's the things I want you to do. Number one, I want you to pray. I want you to join us in prayer that God can fulfill the vision he's given to us through us. And number two, I want you to get excited. I want you to be excited about what God's doing. And number three, I want you to get involved. If right now you're kind of watching all this happen around you, when it's all said and done, you're going to look back and see what God has done through other people when he's inviting you to be a part of it. So I want you to get involved. In Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, 
It says, now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. How cool would it be if we look back at this time next year at our wigs and we're thinking, wow, we had no idea that God was gonna do so much more than we even thought was possible. And so I invite you to get excited, to pray, to get involved. Let's do this together. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for your vision. Thank you so much that you've provided us with that vision. You've given it to us, our leaders, and now we've written it down. We've put it up on a billboard so our, our church family, we can see it together. We can get excited about it. And Father, I pray that you'd give us the courage now to run after it with all that we've got, to open up the window, to shoot every arrow of victory that we've got out that window because we know that your hand of blessing is on this place and this is a church ready to receive it. God, we love you and we're excited about all that you're gonna do. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Well, we are so thankful for the truth that was shared in this message today. Please know that we, as a church, are praying that what you have learned today, the truths that God has put deep into your heart, will manifest themselves and grow themselves into something amazing. And as always, you can experience that with other believers, other people who are walking this walk of faith at ACC on Sunday mornings. Please remember this, you belong at ACC.